In this video, I'm gonna teach you two things. First of all, don't believe anybody that tells you Australia is a warm place. It is bloody cold in the middle of winter, hence the jacket. Second of all, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can model this building right here in our CAD 25. Let's go. All right, so welcome back to another tutorial on our CAD 25. Today, we're gonna to be replicating this image right here. So starting off with a basic template, use whatever is available to you. I'm gonna start by selecting my wall tool up the top, going to my external walls and selecting one of the wall types along the right hand side here. For the purposes of this video, I'm simply gonna click the first wall, it doesn't matter what it is, slide across to a blank part of the screen and start drawing. Basically what we can see is an elongated rectangular shape on the ground floor with a protruding center spine that is basically split across two levels. So what we're gonna do is simply show our layer of walls external, press the P button to flip to the external edge, and then create a relatively long 35 meter rectangle to start our project. I'm then gonna make it five meters deep, run that back, and finish it off here. So it does look like this building here is split in more of a V formation than just a typical rectangle. So what I'm gonna do next is select that entire building, select our axe tool up top, Cut that randomly somewhere along the page. It doesn't really matter where we cut this building. It's just to actually undulate that shape. Press Command E to open up our rotate tool. Select once, select twice, and then let's rotate that 15 degrees across. Next, I'm gonna select these two walls that are open. Press Command I to join them up. Repeat the same step up here. So then to create our protruding shape in the middle, I'm gonna hold our Option or our Alt button in the center here and simply draw another rectangle regardless of size, shape, or anything. I'm just gonna simply draw a square. And there you have it. Now we have our three-sided box to start off with. If I marquee our shape, right-click, Show as Marquee, double-click the scroll wheel, you'll see that we have most of our building ready to go. It's showing plasterboard on the outside because that is what I selected. If I tap the P button again, we'll have brickwork on the bottom, similar to what is on this reference image for us. On the reference image, they're showing stone, so we can easily select all these walls, control T, override our internal or our external surface or all of them if we wish, and find some sort of stonework to match. So let's go stone 02, press OK, and there you go. Now we have a very similar stonework at the bottom. Next, we're gonna come up to our project map again, not our view map, just to keep things simple in this video. Go to our first floor, press escape, right click on ground floor, show as trace. Then we're gonna go back to our wall tool. Let's select something different up the top. Let's go 90 mil stud partition. And now it looks like it is offset just a little bit around the entire perimeter of this building. So the easiest way for me to replicate this is to simply draw the outside of the building that we drew below, copying it identically along the whole perimeter of this build. Then select all of our walls, click on one of the blue lines, go to our offset tool, and let's offset that 500 millimeters around the entire building. Next, I'm gonna select the ends and I'm gonna push those out two and a half meters away. So again, if we select three open ends, Command I, it will join those up. Repeating that process on the left and right hand side, we're gonna end up with a shape something similar to this. Coming back to our 3D marquee, we're gonna see our building is slightly floating and that our marquee has cut off part of our building. So right click, show all, and now we see that our building is where it needs to be. We can also see that our floors are floating in the wrong space. So if we press Control or Command 7, we can see that we have 500 millimeters in our ceiling structure. Now, I don't think we need that in this particular case. So what I'm simply gonna do is drop this down to 2745, drop this to 300 millimeters, and keep that at three meters, click OK. Then I'm going to select our entire top floor, Command T. I'm going to drop that 300 millimeters so it sits on the floor itself. With the entire top floor selected, I'm once again gonna press Command T, open up our settings, change all of the walls and materials at once, and change that to a dark timber selection. So at the moment, I don't have too many options. I do have wood walnut vertical, so if we click wood walnut vertical, that's very hard to say, in a quick succession, 
we're gonna see ourselves with a dark timber look, very similar to what's going on in this picture. Next, I'm gonna introduce these three balconies which seem identical along the way. So coming back to our ground floor, taking our external walls, pushing them back in line whilst copying them. So if we select one of these walls, Control Command D and then tap the Alt or Option button. It allows us to copy and paste across very, very quickly. Then I'm gonna select our three walls on the outside. They appear to only be about five, 600 millimeters tall, so not linked. Total 900 millimeters, 600 plus 300 on the overall bottom. And all of a sudden we're quickly creating what we see in this picture. Next, I'm gonna select these three walls, click Command D, tap that Option button again, drag it up, holding Shift and let go. So now we have our box art frame that we see in the picture. It's becoming more and more obvious to me that that top floor is a lot higher than what we have selected. So Command 7 again, let's change that to 3.6 which is automatically gonna move all of our walls up and we just have to move those walls that we messed with a second ago up as well. It looks like the return on these sides is a little bit thicker as well. So if we come back to our floor plan, zoom into our walls and let's say we create a 600 deep return on all sides. We're able to duplicate that across to the other side, checking it in 3D, we have our boxed out frame. Now I'm gonna repeat that same step on the other two sides. There we go, so you guys don't have to watch the repetitive process over and over again. What we can also see on this image is it's quite repetitive on the window treatment. So they're all highlight windows roughly in the center of this build. They're all rectangular and long, paired with a few small squares in between. So coming back to our first floor plan again, zooming out a little bit, selecting our window tool, and then finding the perfect square window. So window 25 will do. Let's call that 2,100 long, and I believe it's only about 600 millimeters tall. Looking at it in 3D, it is an ugly color. So let's go to our model attributes, and let's change our materials to black, and we can keep our glass as it is. So if we drop in one window somewhere approximately here, take a look in 3D, we can see it's too low, first of all. So let's increase that sill height to 1,600, and let's make that significantly bigger. Let's make that three meters wide because it doesn't look appropriately scaled. I'm then gonna come back into my floor plan and basically create a few of these windows in repetitive sequence so that we have something similar to what we see on our image. I'm not really gonna try too hard. I'm just gonna duplicate the same images time and time again, the same windows time and time again, should I say, so that we have something that looks relatively close. Coming back into 3D, all those windows have been put in. We see a couple small ones, a couple bigger ones, and one in the background as well. Now what we also see is a boxed out window frame. A number of ways to create this. The easiest is with the slab tool. So let's take our slab tool, let's then create a slab that is the same width as our window frame. Let's drag it out 300 millimeters. So it's not 250 millimeters thick. It can only probably be about five millimeters thick. Let's change all those materials to black as well and then press OK. We can then replicate that slab to the top of the window and create a side profile in the same manner as which we created the top. So that's very quick and very easy to create a window box effect like we have in this image. It appears that the window boxes are predominantly only on these two windows and there seems to be a quite large opening in that side there which I haven't picked up before. So if we simply drag that window, make that larger to match our opening here on the center portion, we can create a much larger window. And we can also select this window box, Control or Command G to group it, Control D to move it, and move it across to our window over here. Command E allows us to rotate even in 3D, so then we can rotate it to our window, extend our window significantly larger so it fits that window box. Now all we're missing is the attention to detail. We're missing that glass balustrade here, the glass balustrade and the door in the background, and a few little cutouts and windows in the lower floor as well. So coming back up to our first floor, we can go to our balustrade tool, also known as our railing tool, open up the settings and adjust our rails to suit that balustrade. Basically, it is a frameless glass balustrade. So what we're gonna do is remove all of these central posts and rails, 
We're gonna remove that top handrail. We're gonna to come to panels. We're gonna add one brand new panel in the middle, which is going to be glass. We don't need any of the fixings up the top. So we'll change that to zero, no frame, no fixings. And we're gonna change our materials to glass as well. Pressing OK and introducing our rail at the back of these properties. One goes here, one goes on the left and one goes on the right. So by introducing those balustrades, you can see that the glass is coming up just over the edge here on the right and the center. It looks like it is significantly taller than what we've created. So if we come back into our settings, let's increase that height to 1200, press OK. We can see that glass peaking up the top. Last but not least, we also wanna introduce our doors in these sections here. So if we come across to our window tool, open up our window settings, type in sliding. We'll see a magnitude of sliding doors open up. So let's just select any random sliding door for the time being, change those materials to match our previously selected black frame. Click OK and drop this window in roughly here. We do wanna make this window significantly wider than what they have created automatically by default and replicate that again on the left and right. And there we go. Now we have those windows in the background coming through. What we're missing for this render is the small windows down the bottom, a quick slab to be able to create better shadows and a roof structure as well, which we're just simply gonna create with a slab. So coming back to our first floor plan, let's copy our box window here on the left-hand side by holding Alt. Go to our ground floor, drop a random little window down the bottom. Let's make this 1200 by 1200 with a 600 sill. Press OK, center that roughly into the wall and coming back up, pressing Control or Command up arrow twice and then up arrow twice down to go to our bottom page. We can quickly drop and drag another one of those windows in downstairs. So now if we move our window at the bottom so the head heights align with each other, we can see we quickly created those two windows that we can see in this image. Next, we wanna come into our ground ceiling. We wanna take our slab tool and basically trace our upper floor. So right click, show as trace reference. If we hold our space button in the center, it'll automatically create a slab over that section that it's defined automatically we can then adjust it to suit ever so slightly. Coming back into 3D to make sure that our slab has come into the right place. Indeed it has, it is automatically created our slab. Now if we wanted to, we could simply select that slab, Control Command D, tap the Alt or Option button, drag that up so we create some sort of roof structure just for 3D representation purposes, nothing more. That is definitely not how a flat slab would work in real life. Now, what we can also see is a sloping falling site, which is quite easily to replicate in ArcAD. So let's go to our ground floor. Let's select our mesh tool and let's simply just draw a square around our building. Now, what we wanna do is create some sort of meandering driveway. So looking from this side of the image, if we're gonna replicate this render, we wanna take our spline tool and we simply wanna click away a few times to create some sort of meandering driveway down the actual page. So if we do that all the way around, we click somewhere in the center, offset that, let's offset that six meters. We can then join our spline together, click our mesh tool, click on one of the edges, select the subtract button, hold space, click in the middle. Then we can press option or alt, select our mesh again, hold the space bar, now, if we come back to our 3D, we'll see our two meshes that we've created. Let's just simply turn on all of our layers. We can see that if we click here, we've created our grass and in the center, we've created our driveway. So let's change that to concrete. Any of them will do, 23 light for the editing purposes. And then we can take one of these nodes on the right hand side, adjust our elevation, lift that up. Let's say 1500 mil for starters maybe a little bit more, let's do another 1500 mil. And now we can see a sloping falling site away. We can see our pathway here. We can introduce a gate here if we wish, or we can simply drag and drop this entire project in to twin motion. If you're looking for anything architecture related, including construction checklists, which are pivotal to any architect in the field, 
make sure you check out davidtomich.com.au. It is the first link in the description. That's all from me. My name is David Tomich, and I'll see you next Monday.